Hello there, you're watching Al24 News coming up next in our news program. Hundreds of protesters gathered in Portland to condemn the decision of a jury who cleared Kylie Rittenhouse over the shooting deaths last year of two people at an anti-racism protest in Kenosha, Wisconsin, last. Thousands of demonstrators took rallies to the streets of cities around Australia today, Saturday, as part of an international day of protests against COVID-19, mandatory vaccinations and lockdown measures, while smaller crowds gathered to support these measures. And finally, millions of Syrians face a new crisis, limited access to safe water, which has degenerated food insecurity, harmed livelihoods and prompted greater migration in search of resources. The causes are both natural and man-made. Hello again and welcome. First in our top stories, Joe Biden has hailed the U.S. House of Representatives for passing a $1.75 trillion social and climate spending bill, a central pillar of his agenda that must now go before the Senate. The Democratic majority in the House approved the Build Back Better Act on Friday, despite fierce opposition from Republicans. Marwa Belaiwa reports. Biden signed into law the infrastructure package, which primarily allocates federal funds to repairing roads, bridges, tunnels, and other transportation systems, and has eventually traveled the country praising its benefits to voters. After an independent government agency predicted the spending measure would add $376 billion to the federal debt over the next decade, Nancy Pelosi, the Democratic Speaker of the House, announced that the lower chamber of Congress would vote on it. This agenda invests in long-term economic capacity and will enhance the ability of more Americans to participate productively in the economy. Steny Hoyer, the Democratic House Majority Leader, informed legislators that the vote would be held on Friday morning after McCarthy invoked his privilege to speak indefinitely from the floor. This bill is truly for the people, not just those who have much, but those who have too little. Many Americans are looking at the investments this bill would make in America's workers and families and asking, how are we going to afford it? McCarthy slammed the legislation and the Biden administration in a four-hour speech that criticized everything from COVID-19 restrictions to migration at the U.S.-Mexico border. For nearly four years, as the House Republicans have been voicing the needs of millions of Americans, House Democrats have broken nearly every rule and standard in order to silence dissident and stack the deck for their radical unpopular agenda. Despite that the White House has insisted that the bill would be fully paid for, moderate Democrats have raised concerns that the package will increase the debit while many Americans are concerned about raising inflation. Hundreds of protesters gathered in Portland to condemn the decision of a jury who cleared Kylie Rittenhouse over the shooting deaths last year of two people at an anti-racism protest in Kenosha, Wisconsin. The jury found Rittenhouse 18 not guilty on all charges, including two counts of homicide, on count of attempted homicide, four wounding a third man, and two counts of recklessly endangering safety during racial justice protests marred by arson, rioting and looting in August 2020. Police in Rotterdam have fired warning shots injuring protesters as riots broke out at a demonstration against government plans to impose restrictions on unvaccinated people. Nabil Khazini reports. This is how Rotterdam looked like yesterday. Crowds of rioters in the Dutch port city of Rotterdam have torched cars and thrown rocks at police, who responded with warning shots and water cannons. The result? Seven people were wounded and more than 80 were arrested. Ahmed Abu Talib, mayor of Rotterdam, said police were obliged to use their forces against protesters. 
Rioters heavily attacked the police at different points in time and the police were forced to draw their weapons and even fired direct shots. Asked to describe the situation, Abu Talib condemned it, saying it was an orgy of violence. Um, an orgy of violence. I can't think of another way to describe it. To control the situation, the Dutch police issued a state of emergency in Rotterdam, shutting down public transportation and ordering people to go home. Protesters had gathered here to voice opposition to government plans to restrict access to indoor venues to people who have a corona pass, showing they have been vaccinated or already recovered from an infection. The imposed partial lockdown in the Netherlands followed up a sharp rise in COVID cases, the highest number of infections since the start of the pandemic. Thousands of demonstrators took rallies to the streets of, uh, to streets of cities around Australia today, Saturday, as part of an international day of protest against COVID-19 mandatory vaccinations and lockdown measures, while smaller crowds gathered to support these measures. Zahra Farjani reports. Several thousand people gathered in Australia's streets on Saturday to protest against COVID-19 vaccination mandates. Demonstrators held panels as they marched down streets in Melbourne, Sydney and Adelaide. This is a warning to Dominic, Paradise, Stomo, you have just woken the sleeping beast. On the other hand, smaller crowds voicing pro-vaccination messages met the anti-lockdown and mandate protesters. By the late afternoon, no violence had been reported from any of the events. We can't make informed decisions. We feel that the government is making the, the decisions for us. And that's really not fair. To date, nearly 85% of Australians aged 16 and above have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. While nationwide vaccinations are voluntary, states and territories have mandated vaccinations for many occupations and barred the unvaccinated from activities such as dining out and concerts. A probe into suspected human rights breaches during Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte's anti-drug campaign has been uh, postponed by the International Criminal Court's head prosecutor. It's worth mentioning that many have been executed by law enforcement agencies with the president's sanction. Firefighters and doctors walk out on strike after the French overseas territory of Guadalupe has been put under curfew after five days of civil unrest and violence. The basis of the unrest is due to the government-imposed COVID-19 protocols that have seen barriers burned in the streets. Marwa Belaywa reports. Alexandre Rochat's office said on Twitter, in light of the social unrest and acts of vandalism, the prefect of Guadeloupe has decided to impose a curfew. Trade unions launched an indefinite strike on Monday. The protest of compulsory vaccinations of health workers against COVID-19 and health pass requirements after Guadeloupe's prefect Alexandre Rochat, who represents the government at the Caribbean archipelago, said, the nightly curfew would run from 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. The sale of gas in jerry cans would also be forbidden, he added. Protesters have tortured cars and erected makeshift barriers across streets. Video on social media showed police changing protesting firefighters who used fire hoses to try and repel the officers and plumes of smoke raising over neighborhoods. France will be sending over 200 police to the island after the demonstration turned violent, with barricades being turned over and fires being set, including cars which could lead to explosive dangerous consequences. In a joint statement made by French Interior Minister Gérald Dermanon and Overseas Minister Sébastien Lecornu, both officials agreed and stated that they strongly condemned the violence and has taken place in the last few hours in Guadeloupe. Ex-Georgian leader Mikhail Saakashvili has agreed to end a 50-day hunger strike in prison that has raised political tensions in the former Soviet Republic and worried the United States. Saakashvili agreed to end his strike on Friday after authorities offered to move him to a military hospital from a prison. Zara Forgeni reports. Saakashvili was arrested on October 1st after returning from exile to rally the opposition on the eve of local election. Saakashvili was moved to a military hospital from a prison hospital after fainting on Thursday, and doctors had urged the authorities to move him to a regular clinic. 
The rights commissioner had said that Saakashvili was not receiving the appropriate medical treatment and needed to be moved to intensive care to avoid the risk of heart failure, internal bleeding and coma after more than a month and a half on hunger strike. His case has drawn thousands of his supporters onto the streets in recent weeks and raised political tensions in the country of 3.7 million people. Georgia's president Zorabichvili stated that Sakhvili's health must be under close supervision, despite the fact that he himself has made the decision to go on a hunger strike and is trying to lead the process. Everyone is equal before the law, but while serving a sentence and while in prison, an ex-president is not and cannot be an ordinary prisoner. He is a special prisoner because everyone, our society just like our international friends, observe his condition and demands the highest standards. The image of our country is reflected in how we treat him and how his dignity, health and safety will be protected. According to media sources, the U.S. on Thursday urged Georgia to treat Saakashvili fairly and with dignity, and it was closely following his situation. The UN Security Council condemned in the strongest terms the intrusion and seizure of the now-closed U.S. embassy in Yemen's capital and the detention of dozens of local employees by the country's healthy rebels. A statement approved by all 15 members of the U.S. most powerful body called for an immediate withdrawal of all healthy elements from the premises and the immediate and safe release of those still under detention. U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price told reporters last week that diplomatic efforts had succeeded in securing the release of most of the detained employees, but that most and some remain in custody. He said then the work was continuing to free the others. Millions of Syrians face a new crisis, limited access to safe water, which has degenerated food insecurity, harmed livelihoods and prompted greater migration in search of resources. The cause are both natural and man-made. Sid Islam reports. According to United Nations assessment, drought-like conditions have developed in the region as a result of less water coming into the river from upstream, as well as irregular and reduced rainfall and higher than average temperatures. For several analysts, the severity of the crisis in Syria is largely due to the influence of climate change in the region. The actual Syrian crisis is closely linked to the influence of climate change since the country has a semi-arid climate where droughts might be coming in the area. Syria's water crisis has been aggravated by the UN Action Plan. Water shortage has devastated crops, agricultural livelihoods, limited food access, and driven up food and basic commodity costs significantly. At least 12.4 Syrians are food insecure, a number that will only climb as the drought continues, as will malnutrition rates. People who have already been relocated may be compelled to move again owing a lack of water, food and other necessities. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues, the water crisis has increased. The incidence of waterborne disease putting further strain on Syria's public health system. The water issue is another challenge for Syrians as they strive to reclaim a feeling of normalcy following decades of strife. Syrians are now under greater pressure and uncertainty. And finally, with the table finally poised and subplots everywhere, it is no wonder the Premier League pantomime still holds the spotlight. Liverpool, Manchester City and Chelsea will resume a finally poised title with race. Plenty of subplots everywhere. Abdurrahim Kashour reports. It was another term an international break, almost exactly five years ago, that ignited Chelsea's push to their most recent Premier League title. Chelsea inherited the trophy from Leicester that season, a rare knot of diversity at the top, and four years since, the title has been safely divided up between Manchester City and Liverpool, until now that is, and another run toward Christmas that may just see a more widespread change of gear. Alemo and the Raida, European champion, are three points clear at the top widely on four goals conceded. The same goes for Manchester City. There have been sublime moments, notably the win of Sanford Bridge, a performance of silky strangulation. This is also a team with an obvious flaw, the lack of an orthodox cutting edge, but City are yet to show their hands, still waiting to make the jump to hyperspace. Liverpool looks more of known quantity again. This is a brilliant team with identifiable flaws. 
in the case that steps down in the quality that will come when players are injured or departed for the African Cup of Nations. The battle for fourth place is wrote only depressing phrase, but it looks open battle with West Ham, Arsenal, Manchester United, Wolverhampton, Brighton and Spurs and Leicester lurking hopefully while Mikhail Antonio says West Ham will remain the real deal, a well-drilled powerful team who looks as if they are having the absolute time of their lives. Conti's presence as Spurs and Arsenal's resurgence added their own layers. And before we wrap up, let's have a reminder of our main top stories. Hundreds of protesters gathered in Portland to condemn the decision of a jury who cleared Kylo Rittenhouse over the shooting death last year of two people at an anti-racism protest in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Thousands of demonstrators took rallies to the streets of cities around Australia today, Saturday, as part of an international day of protest against COVID-19 mandatory vaccinations and lockdown measures, while smaller crowds gathered to support these measures. And millions of Syrians face a new crisis, limited access to safe water, which has degenerated food insecurity, harmed livelihoods and prompted greater migration in search of resources. The causes are both natural and man-made. That's all for me and the rest of the team. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.